Hallelujah. How's everybody today? Are you blessed? Amen. Praise God. It's a wonderful day to die. <laughs> glory, 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 glory. Well, things are continuing to happen in this global temporary events, in this temporary realm. Jesus came to bring life and life abundantly. And he holds true to that. In fact, the word tells us that God releases daily benefits for me and you. Daily benefits. There's something he's always getting ready to release, but the whole thing is getting in position so, to get it. How many of y'all want to be blessed? How many of y'all want to be prosperous? Amen. Then your heart must be set on kingdom business and not yourself. Amen? It always must be set on kingdom business. Kingdom must be first no matter what. That's how people get blessed. And see, the greatest blessing is God's presence. And there's a reality that comes that you can't live without his presence. It is his presence. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how many things, how much material. Without God's presence, we're miserable. Amen. People spend many hours to try to gain things for self instead of expanding God's kingdom. Many hours. Many work hours. Many distances. Many all kinds of things. Everything's about self. But not about kingdom. See, there's an area where the heart is totally sold out, not partially sold out. Amen. It's really about kingdom. In other words, we don't do anything that interferes with God's kingdom or interrupts what he's doing. Amen? Amen. Anything that interrupts is of the enemy, even though it may bring prosperity. It can be a lie. Because, see, the devil will con everyone, anyone that can, he can con. He's the most cunning beast there is, isn't he? Amen. And he sways people with money. False opportunities, false entitlements, false hopes, all kinds of things to try and draw people out where God has set that individual, no matter where it is. That's called positioning. So we must fight to maintain position. We fight to maintain position in every area. That's why he said only those <clears throat> who I am first will be my disciples. Would you turn to Ezekiel 36 for a second here? Ezekiel 36. <clears throat> this scripture keeps burning in my spirit, and every time I go to do something, it keeps coming back to me. And the Holy Spirit begins to unfold multiple realities associated with the Spirit, uh, uh, Scripture, to bring us to other levels. God is in the promoting business. Amen? Amen. He's also in the demoting business. <laughs> That's why he says, what good is it to gain all the things of the world and lose your soul? Or find out you never fulfilled the will of God in your life. Or fulfilled your mission. You know, many people say, well, Lord, first let me do this and then I'll. Let me get this done and then I'll. <clears throat> Ezekiel 36 and verse 23. He says, I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. Anybody ever profaned the name of the Lord? Don't raise your hand. Because if you don't, you're a liar. <laughs> Amen. And the nation shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God, when I am hallowed in, your, in you before their eyes. In other words, where I am honored in you. Where people will see that I am first in your life no matter what. That I am first. 
So there's a, that's a stipulation, isn't it? Amen. See, people want to get blessed and have all kinds of stuff when he's really not first. Amen? Amen? And until he truly becomes first in everything, that doesn't mean, mean that you can't have fun and whatever, but he must be first. That's where priorities are always reset every single day. But if your priority, priorities won't be reset unless you make connect. If you're not connected to God's presence, your priorities are scrambled. You'll be led by whatever you think and whatever you feel instead of fulfilling the mission. You know, there's a long-term mission and there's a short-term mission. The short-term mission is every single day. And that short-term mission is to train me and you for the long-term mission. In verse 24, he says, For I will take you from among the nations, which everyone's come from another nation, Amen. our ancestors, and gather you out of all countries and bring you into your own land. This is where God has sent us. Amen? Amen. Now, also land is associated not only with territory, but in the area of territory, there's multiple territories. So God sends you to a fellowship, that's your land. Amen? Amen. That's a territory. Your territory is also your home. These are territories. The territory for me and you nationwide is the United States. Amen. But we have another territory that we protect, and that's Israel. But there are territories that you and I must battle to drive out demonic forces. And so many people do not drive out demonic forces. And they wonder why things happen. It says here, look at, in verse 25. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and, I will clean, uh, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all of your filthiness and all of your what? Idols. Idols, idols. Why? Because you cannot warfare with idols attached to you. The word says that any uh, soldier entangled in the affairs of this world, those are idols. He won't be successful. In verse 26, And I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you, and I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh, which we know is called the old man also, and you will, and you, and give you a new heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will be my, and you will keep my judgments and what? And you will do them, do them, do them. Judgments is a form of execution. So everybody, in other words, you are going to execute the plan. By executing the plan of God means that you've been connected and you're aligned. You cannot execute the plan of God without it. You must be in, uh, connected and, in, and aligned with the word of God so that you are able to receive, believe, and execute in everything, whatever it is whether it's at your job, where, wherever you are, no matter what's going on. And even some areas, it's where, where you are refusing the voice of the stranger so you can execute the will of God. But you got to remember something, that this is why we were saved. <laughs> Amen? Amen? Okay. And then he says this. Hallelujah. Are you ready? And I will, um, and then you shall what? Verse 28. Dwell. Dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your God. And I will deliver you from all of your uncleanness, and I will call for the grain and multiply it, and bring no famine upon you. And I will multiply the fruit of your trees and increase the fields so that you need never again bear the reproach of famine among the nations. Again, this is where prosperity comes. But the first prosperity God always wants to bring is to your soul, your inner man, your new man, where you are prospering. In other words, you are gaining access to God's presence. You are connected to God's presence. Your soul is being converted. You are seeing kingdom business first. Everything is about kingdom business no matter what. Where you are looking to execute God's plan. Amen? You're looking to it. But he says, you got to be first hollowed in me. In other words, when we express him first, 
So there's two types of lands I want to talk about. It's the land that we just talked about, the physical land, and then there's the spiritual land. There's territorial. That's why we fight territorial spirits. Your temple is considered a land. Human beings are considered a land. In fact, what was it created from? Land. Dust. Amen? But now he has a spirit in it. Exodus 3. Exodus 3. Yeah, we'll change course. We're going to execute the plan of God. Exodus 3. Is everybody there? In verse 7. Let's speak it. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. Egypt is associated with the land of bondage. I want you to also understand that Egypt is a Nephilim race. They were the Nephilim race with the pharaohs and so forth. Does everybody get it? And this was at that time because they called themselves gods and goddesses, didn't they? They actually sacrificed children. And verse 8, so I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and bring them up from that land to a good and large land. To a land flowing with what? Milk and honey. Now, I want you to know that milk and honey is associated with prosperity and abundance. That's, a, that's what it's expressed. Milk and honey is prosperity and abundance. But first you got to get to the land, don't you? To the place of the Canaanites. Now, check this out. He says, okay, well, I'm going to send you to this land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, and Parasites, and all the rest of the Hivites, and Jezebites, and all giants are. <laughs> the Nephilim race. I'm going to send you to a land where it seems like, man, you can't win. But that's the land. Because it's going to take a battle. It's going to take a fight. It says, now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppress them. You know that demonic activity always brings oppression. Amen. So the Egyptian race was a Nephilim or Luciferian race. There are false gods and goddesses, doctrines, false demons, and I mean false doctrines of demons. And they were the oppressors of the human race. God said, enough is enough. So what did he do? He sent Moses to lead the people out. And he gave them a covenant. He said, I'm going to take you out of this land and get you into a, a large land, a good land, flowing with milk and honey, where, of course, giants leave, but I'm going to take care of that as long as you listen, obey. So what's happening here is God does a, his plan is always associated with this. Escape to retake. Does everybody get it? He's always bringing us into a place where he, we're always escaping. He's always making a way of escape. So once we escape, then we can retake what's been taken. Amen. So we want to get into a place where we're always retaking territory. The more territory we take, the more the kingdom of God is manifested. Deuteronomy 9. Deuteronomy chapter 9, starting at verse 1. Is everybody there? Hear, O Israel, you are to cross over the Jordan today and go into, the, and go into deep possess nations greater and mightier than yourselves. Remember that he's going into all these giant places. Cities great and fortified up to heaven. A people great and tall. Who is he talking about? Giants. 
the descendants of an An Anakim, whom you know and whom you heard, it is said, who can stand before the descendants of Anak, or they used to be called the Anaki. Therefore, understand today that the Lord your God is he who goes over before you as a consuming fire. How many of y'all want God to be a consuming fire for you? He will destroy them and bring them down before you, so you shall drive them out. Who shall drive them out? We. It said, he'll bring them down, but you drive them out. And destroy them quickly. So who's supposed to destroy them? We are. As the Lord has said to you, do not think in your heart after the Lord your God has cast them out before you, saying, because of my righteousness, the Lord has brought me in to possess this land. But it is because of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord is driving them out from before you. That is happening right now. This is happening. God is raising up the body, the headless body. Those are the warriors that do not live out of their heads, but out of the spirit. And they are driving out forces of evil in every area. It is not because of your righteousness or the uprightness of your heart that you go in to possess their land, but because of the wickedness of these nations that the Lord your God drives them out from before you and that he may fulfill the word which the Lord has sworn to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, is that powerful or what? He said he would drive out the giants the Nephilim race, not because of anything that of self-righteousness, anything that we've done, but because it is a wicked nation. Now, you got to remember, these individuals escaped from Egypt. Egypt, God allowed them to come out from bondage, where every one of us has come out from bondage. The world is ruled by Egypt and Babylon. It's the system. Verse 6, therefore understand that the Lord your God has not given you this land to possess because of your righteousness, for you are stiff-necked people. <laughs> Remember, do not forget how you provoked the Lord your God into wrath in the wilderness from the day that you departed from the land of Egypt until you came to this place. You have been what? Rebellious against the Lord. Also in Horeb. You provoked the Lord to rest so that the Lord was angry enough with you to have destroyed you. When I went up into the, remember Moses is talking about this, he's writing this. When I went up into the mountain to receive the tablets of the stone, the tablets of the covenant, which the Lord made you, then I stayed on the mountain 40 days and 40 nights. I neither ate nor drank water. Then the Lord delivered to me the two tablets of the stone written with the finger of God. And on them were all the words which the Lord had spoken to you on the mountain from the midst of the fire in the day of the assembly. And it came to pass at the end of the 40 days and 40 nights that the Lord gave me the two tablets of the stone, the tablets of the covenant. The Lord said to me, arise, go down quickly from here for your people whom you brought out of Egypt have acted corruptly and they have quickly turned aside from the way which I commanded them. They have made themselves a molded image. Whoa. A molded image. In other words, they've gone back to idols again. Furthermore, the Lord spoke to me saying, I have seen this people and indeed they are stiff necked people. Let me alone that I may destroy them and blot out their name from under heaven and I will make of you a nation mightier and greater than they. Now he's telling Moses this. Moses saying, hey, Lord, hey, take it easy. <laughs> we can work this out. I know it. <laughs> so I turned and came down from the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire, and the two tablets of the covenant were in my two hands. And I looked, and behold, you had sinned against the Lord your God and have made for yourselves a molded calf you have turned aside quickly from the way which the Lord had commanded you. Let's get, look how many people turn aside quickly. Alcohol. Lying, stealing, cheat, whatever it is, they turn aside quickly. Then I took the two tablets and threw them out of my two hands and broke them before your eyes. Now I want you to know this is prophetic because the first covenant would be broke and another covenant would come. And I fell down before the Lord at his 
as, as first 40 days and 40 nights, and I neither ate bread nor drank water because of all of your sin which you have committed in doing wickedly in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. For I was afraid of the anger and hot displeasure with which the Lord was angry with you to destroy you. But the Lord listened to me at the time also. And the Lord was very angry with Aaron, who was a high priest for the Lord and who would have destroyed him. So I prayed for Aaron also at the same time. Then I took your sin, the calf which you made and burned it with fire and crushed it and ground it very small until it was as fine as dust and threw its dust into the brook that, the, the, that descended from the mountain. So G the Lord said, I will drive out the giants, the land of Nephilim, because of their wickedness. But here he is made an escape so that we could retake territory. But first... <laughs> He's got to get rid of all the idols, 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 false belief system. How about accursed items? Amen. All of these things. You know, people don't realize that your phone can be an accursed item. That's something he keeps reminding me of. Because people use that phone as a selfie. <laughs> you know, I, I go to the gym and sometimes it's sickening, you know. And you see all these people with the selfies. You know, doing it. <laughs> and some of them, t t anyways, I don't get it. <laughs> Go to Judges chapter 2. <laughs> Glory. Judges chapter 2. Retaking territory is the name of the message today, just in case. It's a retake. First, you got to be reset. Glory. Judges, chapter 2. Is everybody there? Amen. We'll speak the first four verses. Then an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bacham. And said, let, I led you up from Egypt and brought you to the land of which I swore to your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. And you shall make no covenant with the inhabitants of this land. You shall tear down their what? Altars. But you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Therefore I said, I will not drive them out before you. But they, will, they shall be what? Thorns in your side, and their God shall be a snare to you. So it was when the angel of the Lord spoke these words to all the people of Israel that the people lifted up their voices and wept. What did he say? He says, because your disobedience, I haven't driven out. See, because you want to be back by the anointing. If you're not back by the anointing, your, your words are nothing but seeds. It's not sword. And that in the areas where we have to be connected and aligned. If we're touching something that's unclean, you're not backed by the anointing. Even if you're agreeing with something that's unclean, you're not backed by the anointing. So in this, he said that there would be thorns in your side and there'll be snares. In other words, there'll be stumbling blocks to us because of what? Disobedience. Go to Numbers 33. Numbers 33. The day you stop battling is the day the enemy starts taking territory. Numbers 33, verse 50. In verse 50, Now the Lord spoke to Moses in the plains of Moab by the Jordan across from Jericho, saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, When you have crossed the Jordan into the land of Canaan, 
Then you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you. Destroy all their engraved stones. Destroy all their molded images. And demolish all their high places. You shall depossess the inhabitants of the land and dwell in it. For I have given you the land to possess. And you shall divide the land by lot of inheritance among your families. To a larger you shall give to a larger inheritance. To a smaller you shall give smaller inheritance. There everyone's inheritance shall be whatever falls on him by lot. And you shall inherit according to the tribes of your fathers. So again, he's, he, he's expressing to, that we are to continually drive out every day. Drive out forces of evil. And, but you cannot drive out. And he reiterates here. Listen, if you have idols. Idols. You know, many people just drift over these idols. They don't even realize it's their idol. Let me share something. Medication can be your greatest idol. Did you ever run out of medication? People freak out because they're dependent on that medication. Instead of being dependent on God. That medication can be an idol. In fact, it can be a curse then. When you receive medication, you should break the curse off of all medication. Cast that spirits out. And ask the Lord to use this to bring healing to your body. Not to keep you addicted or bound for the rest of your life. I hate when doctors say, well, you're going to have to take this for the rest of your life. I break that off in Jesus' name. Amen? I mean, come on, think about what they're doing right now. They're putting all these young little kids on, uh, what do you call that stuff? Riddlin. And they riddle. <laughs> it messes them up. I mean, instead of letting the kid outgrow, you know, childhood. How about that? Amen. Remember, they're little heathens, you know? We're all little heathens until we outgrow them, right? <laughs> And give the kids a break. So, and families are taking home because they, they come home, they teach this in school. And they promote it in all the education and everything else. They're trying to get these kids connected to the demonic arena of influence and dependent on medication. It's incredible to me. And we need to take our kid to a counselor. He swore. He didn't finish his homework. He must be this. He didn't start talking yet. He didn't start crawling yet. She didn't do this. She didn't do that. Oh, let's just bring him to get some counseling and get medicated. It's plumb dumb. Let the child outgrow it. Trust God. We all grow stupidity after a while, I hope. Amen. Amen? <laughs> all right. Joshua 7. Retaking territory. Pray for your children and trust God. Everyone's got to run the course. Look, at you know the end result, right? Amen. That's all that matters. Joshua 7, verse 6. Well, this is one of those moments where the Lord sent Joshua out, out to battle and he could not win. He lost the battle and he was like, Lord, why did you send us out there? So that we can be shameful, disgraced? And verse 6, And Joshua tore his clothes and fell on the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord until evening. And he and the elders in awe of Israel, and they put dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, Lord God, why have you brought this people over the Jordan at all to de deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us? Oh, that we had been content and dwell on the other side of the Jordan. It's called worse first thinking. Amen. Oh, Lord, what shall I say when Israel turns its back before its enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear it and surround us and cut off our name from the earth. Then what will you do for your great name? So the Lord said to Joshua, Get up. <laughs> Get 
up. Why do you lay thus on your face putting dirt on your head? <laughs> Israel has sinned, and you didn't see it, but I'm going to expose it. Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken from some of the accursed items, and have both stolen and deceived and they have also put it among their own stuff. So I want you to know stolen goods is an accursed item. You Amen. steal something that becomes an accursed item. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Therefore, the children of Israel could not stand before their enemy. In other words, they could not drive them out. But turn their backs before their enemies because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with you anymore unless you destroy the accursed from among you. Accursed items will prevent you from driving out enemies. Amen. Accursed items. People have no idea. I'm sorry, I, alcohol is an accursed item. Amen? There's medication that's accursed items. If it has a skull and crossbone on it, you know it's a cursed item. Clothes are a cursed item. There are things that are accursed items. That are idols are a cursed item. In Matthew 16. You know, why don't we, people turn back to drugs, turn back to whatever, get easily caught back in because they stop driving out. They become compromised, complacent, and lazy. People get upset sometimes when they call me, hey, pray for me. I say, pray for yourself. <laughs> drive it out yourself. Nobody can drive out for you. You must drive out. Amen? Amen? Well, that's mean. No, it's reality. The word says it. <laughs> oh, not that we don't pray for people but some people are just too stinking lazy to pray for themselves they want somebody else to do all their work Matthew 16 verse 13 when Jesus came into this region of Caesarea Philippi he asked his disciples saying who do men say that I the son of man am so they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said, but who do you say today? In other words, he's trying to connect. And Simon bar said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus answered and said, then blessed are you, Simon bar -Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say that you, that to you, that you are Peter, and on this rock, on this foundation, on the anointing, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. On the anointing, that is the foundation, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Listen, when you're back by the anointing, you're able to drive out. No weapon formed against you shall prosper because he is in you is greater than he is in the world. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. That's the anointing. You are more than a conqueror. And if he be for you, who can be against you? So what's the problem? Disconnect. Not aligned. Idols. And he says something powerful. He says, now, and now that you got that, let me tell you something else I'm going to do. I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. Of heaven. And I don't think people take this serious sometimes. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. But he's saying first you got to get connected. Because it isn't going to work if you're not connected. Connected to his presence, aligned with his word. The rock is the anointing. With the kings, these are keys of authority. Everyone say keys of authority. Keys of authority. To bind and to loose. That's what the keys are. 
But if you're not, uh, if you're not backed by the anointing, the keys aren't working. You just spin it, and the door will never unlock or lock. <laughs> Matthew 11. We are in such a time right now where there must be intercession to take territory. Eleven, eleven. And Jesus said, Surely I say to you, among those born of women, there has not risen one greater than John the Baptist. But he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven, what? Suffers violence. And the violence do what? Take it by force. In other words, they drive out. For all the prophets and the law of the prophets, prof, law prophesied until John. And if you are willing to receive it, he is what? El was Elijah anointed? Well, yeah. That's why he expresses this. He is Elijah who is to come. He who has an ear, let him hear. So, in other words, he's saying we're to take this by force, violence. We are to drive out. Why? Because we are backed by the anointing. Amen. Elijah is the anointing so that you and I can take or drive out evil um, forces from all areas of land and territory and even bodies. You know, like I said, bodies are territory. That's land, right? Go to Ephesians 6. We want to drive out territories of the land, air, and sea. Drive them out. <coughs> out of your workplace. Everywhere you go. Even in restaurants. Hopefully you'll have a waiter left. Hopefully the cook will still be there. <laughs> Ephesians 6.10. When I go into a restaurant and we pray and we bless the food, I claim everyone's soul in that building for Jesus. I claim everyone's soul in there. In verse 10, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Do what? Put on the whole armor of God. You know, some people still don't do that. They think they're okay. Oh, I know, Lord. You know, I mean, I've been doing this 30 years and haven't gained any territory, but you know. Oh, that's where the enemy comes in complacent. He loves to get a person into a place where he's false comfort. <laughs> Hallelujah. Put on the full armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. So we are to put on the full armor of God every day. Every day. Why? Because if, uh, if you don't have the full armor of God on, you're not connected. The anointing is not backing you. You're not going to bind and loose. You're going to get bound and not loosed. Matthew 12. Hallelujah. That's where people fall into places where it says um, bad company corrupts good habits because they're not sensitive enough or discerning enough to stay away from individuals in that area. 
the reason why they do what they do is to try and save money. So they live with people that are corrupt. Dumb. No connection. No connection to God's presence. <clears throat> Matthew 12, verse 28. Because kingdom's not first, and if you're not connected, kingdom is never first. Amen? Verse 28. But if I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man? And then he will what? Plunder his house. Wow. He who is not with me is what? Against me. And he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. Wow. So if we're not doing the things that he's requesting us to do, executing these things, he's saying you're either driving out or you're being driven out. You're either with me or you're against me. If you're not gathering with me, which has to be, it can only be established by driving out, then you're scattering. Amen? Go to Mark 11. Mark 11, verse 14. Or 15, I'm sorry. Mark eleven fifteen. 15. It says, so they came to Jerusalem, then Jesus went into the temple and began to do what? Drive he began to do what? Drive out. drive out. He didn't drive through, he drove out. <laughs> Amen? Amen? And he drove out those who what? Who bought and sold in the temple and overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry wares through the temple. And he taught saying to them, is it not written, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have made it a what? Den of thieves. A den of thieves. Everywhere we go, every building you go into, you bind a strong man. Lord, I ask that you go before me as a consuming fire. I bind blind, mute, and deaf every strong man and power of darkness and drive out every demonic force wherever I go today that I may enter and plunder the goods of evil and establish your kingdom. Amen? Amen. Again, people wonder why they have problems. They, they, they wonder why they keep going in that same cycle again. Because they've stopped driving out. They've stopped battling. They're calling on Jesus, but Jesus is saying, man, I gave you the power to do it. Amen. Do it. Oh, Mark 16. 16, 16. Mark 16. <clears throat> Is everybody there? Let's speak it. What's the word believe mean? Follow. And he who believes and is baptized, filled with the Holy Ghost and saved. <laughs> uh, but he who does not believe will be what? condemned <clears throat> and these signs will follow those who believe in my name they'll what cast out what's the word cast out mean drive out amen drive out demons they will speak with new tongues why because they've been baptized in the holy spirit and they're backed by the anointing they will take up serpents and if they drink anything deadly by no means hurt them they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover praise god Drive out. Here, Jesus was driving out of the, the temple, physical temple, and then he drove out of the human temple. Amen? Drive out. Remove forces. Bind. Loosening. Call down fire. Destruction. Bring confusion in the enemy's camp. Break the curses off the land. Luke 8, 26.
Is everybody there? In yeah. verse 26, let's speak it together, please. <clears throat> then they sailed to the country of Gardenius, which is opposite of Galilee. And when he, and Jesus stepped out on the land, there met him a certain man from the city who had demons for a long time. And he wore no clothes, nor did he live in the house, but in tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out, fell down before him with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I beg you, do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for it had often seized him, and he was kept under guard, bound with chains and shackles, and he broke the bonds and was driven by the demon into the wilderness. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is your name? And he said, Legion, because many demons have entered him. Now a herd of many swine were feeding there on the mountain, so they begged him that he would pre permit them to enter them. And per he permitted them. Then the demons went out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd ran violently down the steep place into the lake and drowned. So <laughs> that didn't do any good, did it? <laughs> I mean, even the pigs didn't want them. They committed suicide. <laughs> so when those who fed them saw what had happened, they fled and told it to the city and the country. Then they went out and to see what had happened and came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed in his right mind, and they were afraid. And they also who had seen it, told them what means uh, he had been demon-possessed, and now he was healed. And, of course, Jesus said, look, at, the guy wanted to say, look, at, I want to follow you. He said, no, go tell. Go tell people what I've done for you. But, see, Jesus gave the demons, one of the things they were saying is, don't send us to the abyss. Don't send us to the abyss. That's called the pit. Amen. But let us go to the swine. So Jesus let them go to the swine. The swine committed suicide, and the demons booked see you and i have authority to send demons to the pit does everybody get it to the pit you vermin let's go to isaiah 9 no no i'm gonna go to acts 19 for a second let's go to acts 19 for a second so you and i God brought us from a place so that you and I could escape to retake. Does everybody get it? If you've, been, if you've been set free to escape and not retake, then you ain't fulfilling your mission. Because some people are out to take, take, take. That's it. But not retake territory. They're only out to take for themselves. Acts chapter 19. In verse 11, let's speak it. Now God worked unusual miracles by the hands of Paul so that even the handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick and the diseases left them and evil spirits went out of them. So they were being driven out by what? The anointing. Does everybody get it? And some of the itinerant Jewish exorcists, I don't know what they were exorcising, you know, took it upon themselves to call the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits, saying, we exercise you by the Jesus whom Paul preaches. Obviously, they're not connected to Jesus. Amen. Also, there were seven sons of Sceva and a Jewish chief priest who did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know, and Paul I know. How did he know Jesus and Paul? By the anointing, the presence of God. He knew they were connected. But who are you? <laughs> and the man whom, in whom the evil spirit was leaped on him, overpowered him, prevailed against him, so that he fled out of the house naked and wounded. I bet. 
naked and wounded. The dude lost the battle. Can you imagine trying to cast out a devil? And all of a sudden the devil says, who are you? There's no anointing on you. And slapped the bejeebies out of the dude. Isaiah 9. <laughs> Not backed by the anointing, no power. Religion does not move demonic forces. In fact, they don't even know they're there. Most of the time. Isaiah 9. <laughs> That's why there's life and death in the power of tongue, right? Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, to order it and establish it with what? Judgment and justice. From that time forward, even forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Government, government, government. I keep, I'm so tired of hearing there's separation between church and government. There is no separation. In fact, the church should be running the government right now. We wouldn't be in the mess we are. You know, it's the church that failed. And Obama and uh, voted for an Obamanite instead of an eternal light. It's the church that failed. They were looking for a free handout. It's the church that failed and let this country go down the pit for the last eight years. Well, it's time that the church arose. Amen? And fought and started driving out the demonic forces out of the government. By intercessory prayer. Yes. Luke 11. I think we got the information. We got the message. Drive out or be driven. <laughs> Escape to retake. It's a good time to self-examine. Are you driving out or are you being driven? <laughs> Luke 11. Now it came to pass when, verse 1, when Jesus, Jesus finished commanding his disi 12 disciples, that he departed from there to teach and to preach in other cities, in their cities. And when John had heard in prison about the works of Christ, he sent two of his disciples and said to him, Are you the coming one or do we look for another? I'm in the wrong place. Man, that sounded weird. Well, why, man, why did somebody say something? Luke 11, thinking, what the snap? <laughs> Luke, are we there yet? We are. Luke 11, verse 1. Okay, we're going to retake this one, okay? <laughs> now it came to pass, as Jesus was praying in a certain place, when he sees that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And Jesus said to them, when you pray, in other words, when you intercede. This was a guideline to prayer. He didn't tell them you have to exactly pray like this. Amen. But do this. Acknowledge your Father in heaven. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your what? Kingdom. Your kingdom come and your will be done. Well, look at it. It ain't coming and done and if you ain't driving out. 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us for our idols. Drive them out. For we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. And don't lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. In other words, those who are led by the Spirit are sons and daughters of God. This was a guideline of prayer. He's explaining, look at acknowledge the Father in the name of Jesus. Amen. Pray for the kingdom to come and it will be done. But you've got to drive out demonic forces so it can be done. And, and repent. He's going to provide everything. Make sure you're backed by the anointing and not by your flesh. Or you'll be driven out. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We thank you for allowing us to begin to retake territory. Retaking territory in the land, air, and sea. Driving out all demonic forces and establishing your kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. I pray for each and every one that reality, revelation, and impartation and even a boldness would be manifested into everyone so that they would be drivers of the powers of darkness to drive them out, enforcers of the law and of the word, bringing light to all places where there is darkness in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Prepare your hearts for communion. You can bring tithes and offerings up.